This episode and others like it are made possible by the generous support of my patrons on Patreon. If you would like to help support this channel and get early access to every video, consider becoming a patron on patreon.com slash cityscapes. Hi guys, Cityscapes here, and welcome back to Verville episode 55. Right now on screen you can see the progress from the last episode. We were finally kicking off the start of this whole Gotthard mountain pass build. Some really cool infrastructure, we have lots of train lines climbing up the mountain, as well as a highway that's meandering through the area here. Those two networks are trying to gain enough height until they reach the place of Göschenen, which is supposed to be something around a thousand meters above sea level, where they can enter the Gotthard Tunnel and head down further south to Italy eventually. At least this is how it would be in real life, of course, as the city skylines and train and car roads are just heading into a tunnel and then eventually headed to a underground dummy station, which is kind of a hub for a lot of train lines in, in Verville. It's just a generic vanilla central station thing and it acts as a depot for basically all the train lines in Verville. I should definitely show this to you by any chance. So yeah, we have trains, we have cars, but besides the, the rails and the highway, we also have like a, a normal quote unquote road it's also heading up the valley here. And this is basically the access road for the buildings I place alongside the, the train tracks and so on. They need access for, for the game mechanics, you know, that the services can reach all the buildings and uh, actually people can move in. But I mean, why am I even justifying it? it? It totally makes sense to have a normal road going up here besides the highway. This is also how it is in real life because uh, back in the day, there used to be only a normal road that's going over the Gotthard, as I explained in the last episode. So you could also think of it as the old access road to the Gotthard, I guess. And besides those networks, we also have this uh, nice creek. At least that's what I try to do here, you know, it's... Um, super hard making narrow water streams in city skylines, if not impossible. Though well, it looks like a pretty big river actually. But still, I'm, I'm trying to narrow the, the water flow down a bit with those um, grey flame rocks, trying to make a real narrow uh, canyon. And because th these rocks and also other type of assets are not interfering with the water, you can actually pretend to have a, a way narrower water stream. You basically just hide the edges of, of the city skyline's water here. That's what you do. Um, it's not looking perfect in every circumstance. Because sometimes it, it looks a bit like the, the water flow is um, heading into the rocks or something. But uh, I, gu I guess it's a, it's a good compromise for city skylines. I'm pretty happy with uh, how it turned out. And uh, in the, not in the next episode, but 
the one that's following after that, which would be the episode 57. Oh, you get to see me using this uh, technique way more extensively. Basically, the whole episode is going to be about it, together with some uh, mountain villages I'm de I developed. And uh, oh, super excited for it! Already picked the th thumbnail and everything. It looks freaking great. Can't wait to show this to you guys. But also for the episode for next week, I have something very special for you. I'm not gonna tease it uh, too much, but uh, we have a very special guest visiting Verville. And I'm pretty sure you all know him. And if not, uh, shame on you. <laughs> Just kidding. But yeah, um, I should probably talk about what you can see me doing right now. I figured out this little uh, technique. Um, maybe you are already aware of it for, for a really long time. I, I don't know. But I used Network Multitool together with those Revo stone tunnel uh, thingies. I'm actually not sure how exactly they are called. Ah, shoot, we already moved away from it. Um, uh, all right, uh, we'll get back to that, I guess. Um, yeah, we will definitely work on that again uh, in, in this uh, time lapse. So, um, so yeah, let's uh, shift to, uh, to this other little thing I'm, I'm doing right now. I'm basically just trying to hide all the terrain glitches a bit and merge the the highway with uh, with the conformed terrain around it better to the map circumstances we we have here so um in a nutshell I'm, I'm just trying to cover all the not so nice looking very stretched uh, terrain texture with uh, the clay frame uh, rocks as well basically all of them are turned into po so i can uh, change the the color of them a little bit to better fit the cliff texture from the map itself. And also in a bit you can see me using this uh, procedural objects distort function, which is absolutely insane. I can't believe it that I didn't figure this out sooner. Um, actually, one of my patrons, Toby, told, told me about that function uh, in a live stream. So I'm super glad I'm doing those live streams from time to time. Um, I think it's... Uh, actually pretty valuable in terms of learning new things for for myself but also for for you guys i think it's just a very good exchange of, of knowledge if you want to catch a live stream you should uh, check me out on on twitch the link is down in the video description and to get notified you best following follow me on uh, on discord where you can customize your your pings you don't need to get any pings if you don't want to but yeah, you can basically choose between pings for YouTube uploads uh, or Twitch uh, streams. So you don't miss out on any of the content. Okay, so here we are again. Here you can see the, the stone tunnel thingies, which I placed with a network multi-tool, with the parallel tool, the same I'm using right now here. Um, and I moved the network perfectly over the actual train tracks had to adjust the height a little bit and like that I can simulate to have like a really old looking tunnel also from the inside of the tunnel because now when we, when I'm gonna record the POV rides you get to see those really oldish looking stone tunnel walls which which looks absolutely great and I use that technique for all the tunnels on this uh, Gotthard mountain railway I think in general, the, the POV ride, it's, it's gonna look pretty neat, super excited for that as well. And then the other little thing I did for the tunnel entrances is to cover them as well with some flattish looking rocks. And this really helps to embed the, the whole train infrastructure into this landscape here. I think uh, especially this hiding of the tunnel entrances into the terrain together with the rocks and lots of greenery that really makes this whole build for me kind of because i personally i really really hate how this game creates tunnel entrances like with this super long portals i mean it doesn't make any sense in, in my opinion it should be a hole in the ground and that's about it and not, not like uh, this whole concrete tube thingy oh yeah what you're gonna do at least there are some uh, techniques you can hide this. And uh, yeah, I'm definitely gonna make 
great use of, of that. Use it everywhere. But now to a little uh, crazy nature detailing thing. I spent so much time on this on the live stream. So I also tried to to make this merge section of the of the two mountain rivers a bit more convincing. For that I used another rock to hide the, the terrain glitch there. And uh, I wanted to cover it with with the waterfalls somehow. But as you can see, this asset has this uh, messy, those messy looking vertices on, on, on the ground to, to make the water look very uh, chaotic. That's the best term I could come up with right now. <laughs> and with the usual approach of manipulating assets with the vertices in PO, you can barely get rid of that. It, uh, I mean, as you can see now, it creates this really sharp edge. It's not looking terrible, but also not great either. So with this new distort function, I, actually, I don't even know if it's new. At least for me, it's, it was new. You can basically stretch and squeeze the whole asset in all directions, but with only eight vertices. And it, this is actually a true game changer. Because especially for corner buildings, you know, when you don't have like perfect 90 degree uh, street layout and you have to squeeze buildings somehow in, in those corners, it never really fit back in the day and uh, it was so insanely tedious to, to manipulate an asset with procedural object to perfectly fit a, a corner like that. But with this function now, it, it, it's, it's, it's a piece of cake. It's super easy. And I can't wait to um, to jump back into uh, into the actual city, into uh, Berville itself, and uh, try this technique out. Maybe I'm gonna do uh, non 90 degree street corners on purpose now. <laughs> Usually it just happened uh, by coincidence, and uh, then later on I regretted uh, that decision because I could never fit any buildings in it. But uh, seems like this problem is now gone. Super excited for it, really. All right, what I, am I doing next here? Oh yeah, I just placed some buildings here and there in some of those loops in the in the street here. I mean, yeah, I'm totally aware that I absolutely don't have the right assets for for a Swiss uh, mountain build here. There, there's just nothing on the workshop in, in terms of. Um, Swiss mountain uh, houses. I guess that's way too niche for for the workshop. I know some creators are working on buildings resembling that style, but uh, they weren't published by the, by the time I was uh, making this this whole build here. And to be honest, I'm also not sure if they will ever appear on the workshop. So yeah, I just had to work with uh, what I had here. It's not looking great, but it's also not looking terrible, and uh, you, you get the idea of, uh, of how this uh, this whole area could look like in, in real life, too. Place the, also a gas station over there, because that's like the, the usual thing that, that's, that's happening. All the tourists uh, traveling with the camper van up the Gotthard ramp, then all of a sudden the, <laughs> the tank is... Uh, empty way sooner than they expected. Uh, that's uh, why you, you get to see a lot of uh, gas stations around this area. But please guys, never refill your tank over at those stations right in front of the gold heart. It's way too expensive there. <laughs> Plan in advance. All right, and uh, here I try to build a little gallery. At least that's what it's called in, in German. Um, like those half opened uh, tunnels. I think you can also call them shed tunnels. They're like the, the most common site in, uh, in Switzerland, almost everywhere in the mountains. Uh, they are used to protect the infrastructure beneath it uh, from landslides and just uh, rocks falling down from the mountain or, or trees uh, that could potentially harm the, the infrastructure. I, I don't know, just, just a protection for, for infrastructure. And I definitely wanted to use that as well. In, in this build here. It's too iconic to, to not use it, basically. And uh, by the way, if you have good asset recommendations I could uh, use for Verville or also my other series, 
feel free to post it down in the comments or uh, also on uh, on Discord. I have an extra channel for that. Because I know that there is a Shed Tunnel asset, I think it's from Japan or something, but I could never find it again, because I think it was... I think the description and, and everything was uh, written in Japanese, and uh, I don't speak Japanese, so <laughs> I, uh, I can't find it anymore. It would be cool if we can use some uh, swarm intelligence here with, <laughs> with YouTube and the whole community. Uh, I mean, it's not uh, that important, but uh, yeah, in general, if you have any ideas uh, about uh, assets or what you definitely want to see before Derville is uh, is ending the whole series, then uh, please shoot. Yeah. Okay, uh, so uh, now on screen, we moved up the valley a little bit. This area is right uh, above the, the canyon we built before. And uh, it's quite a wide area of the valley, like uh, all of a sudden it gets a bit wider and I wasn't sure what to do with, uh, with the whole area, if I should build some grass fields for, for cattle or if I should just uh, use it as a forest space or something. But when I was building this, uh, this road infrastructure around the area, I figured out that uh, it would totally make sense to have a little hydroelectric power plant around the area here because there are so many of those um, but my apologies i uh, apparently i have no clue what i was building in this time lapse here because right now we <laughs> we move back all the way down to the valley where the valley is beginning i mean um sorry for that i'm uh, as confused as you are <laughs> So yeah, apparently we will get back to that as well uh, a bit later on, I just checked. So just keep that thought in, 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 in your mind. For me, is something down here in at the entrance of the valley was missing. It, it looked a bit empty and uh, I figured I should probably extend this uh, river shore path here a bit. Even though it's just a, a, dummy, a dummy path. No sane citizen would use this uh, path because uh, it's like a hundred kilometers long and uh, basically doesn't go anywhere. So it's purely for decorational purposes. And uh, yeah, I used it as, a, as an end line for, for those uh, farm fields here. And uh, the area between the path and the actual river I covered with some rocks and uh, greenery. I think that uh, looks pretty neat. And it's a good excuse to, uh, or, a, or a good technique to use those sharp edges from, from those far feel, farm fields a bit. And look at that, with node controller you can just fit those farm fields perfectly in basically every, uh, every area you want. I'm really, really uh, amazed by, by those assets. Of course, then I also had to uh, draw the, the power line, the high voltage power cables uh, along here because I'm actually not sure if I mentioned that uh, in the last episode, but the, the Gotthard region is also very important for connecting power grids from, from the south, from uh, Italy to Switzerland and the rest of Europe. And there are multiple high voltage power lines uh, going over the Gotthard. So yeah, and here we are again at, uh, at this uh, little lake I was just talking about before. I think it's just a, a great little addition for, for this wider part of, of the valley here. It just fits perfectly in here and it covers a pretty wide or a pretty big area all at once with uh, not too much effort in terms of detailing. Uh, and that's always something you can look forward in city skylines. <laughs> Try to reduce your own workload a little bit. And uh, for the actual dam itself I used the Japanese seawall asset. Um, I think that that wall asset just just looks great for so many purposes. I really love this one. I wish there was a version with perfectly vertical uh, wall sides. You know, this one is getting wider at the bottom, but for like some smaller scale uh, detailing, would be great if if there was like a, a, a thin version like those classical retaining walls um 
But yeah, the note controller, you can basically fit it in whatever shape you want. So it's not that big of a deal. It's more about the convenience of, of using them. And did you see how I just built this road here completely with network multi-tool? Uh, this is, uh, I mean, I can't even remember when I built a road with the normal City Skylines uh, network tool. I do it all with network multi-tool these days. It's, uh, it's just so great when you can first draw the shape where the road uh, should go with every single turn and uh, stretch of straight road segments. It's, it's great and then you just press enter and it's perfectly where you expect it to be. Can uh, only recommend uh, network multi tool and uh, this uh, whole technique here. And um, as we are approaching the end of today's episode, uh, I'm just doing some last uh, detailing things with the with the um, the brushes I prepared already in advance for the whole area and and the whole Verville project. And it saves you a lot of time in the long run. It takes a little bit of time to put together a proper uh, tree brush but it's absolutely worth it in the end for instance here I used like the high resolution trees pine trees from gray flame in areas where you're gonna look a little bit closer but in like in, in the background I always uh, went for for the low poly versions they also have better LODs and yeah that's um, that's uh, about it for today's episode. We're just building a last shed tunnel here. And off camera I also covered this part a little bit with some rocks and greenery. But guys, that's already been it for today's episode of Verville. I really hope you enjoyed. I certainly did. This whole Gotthard thing is super exciting to do. Definitely stay tuned for the... For the next few episodes, we're gonna have even crazier na nature detailing. And uh, next week, as I said, a special guest is visiting Derville. And if you would like to see some screenshots, photorealistic ones from Derville and also my other projects, definitely visit my Instagram channel. Consider uh, leaving a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Join my Discord server if you would like to chat a little bit and exchange some ideas share your own screenshots from your builds and uh, yeah i am really looking forward to see you in the next one